These beautiful rolling hills and valleys of northeast Somerset were once the setting for an important part of the Industrial Revolution. The Somersetshire Coal Canal. The canal carried coal along the Cam and Wellow Valleys to markets in Bath, Wiltshire and beyond. The canal was connected to the many collieries by tramways. It was promoted by the mine owners of the coal fields, as it was cheaper than pack horse or horse and cart. It became one of the most successful canals in the country and operated for nearly a hundred years. The canal originally had two branches. The northern branch started at a terminus at Timsbury and Poulton Basins. It ran for nearly eight miles to Midford. There it was originally joined by a southern branch, which ran from Radstock. But that had problems, and by 1812 had been replaced by a tramway. The southern branch had crossed the Midford Brook over a handsome aqueduct. At Midford was the all-important weigh house, a weighing machine, which ensured that the right charges were made for the cargo passing along the canal. From here, the Coal Canal went on to join the Kennet and Avon Canal at Dundas Aqueduct. The 41 metre drop in level from Poulton to Dundas was concentrated at Coombe Hay. An early plan was to lower boats by means of a water-filled case and lock, a wooden box into which boats were floated and then lowered underwater like a submarine. This failed and was temporarily replaced by a gravity-operated railway, the inclined plane. But that was too slow, so eventually a flight of 22 conventional locks was opened in 1805. The remains of the lock flight can be seen today. An important surveyor of the canal was William Smith, who observed from fossils and strata that rocks were laid down in a particular order. This challenged the thinking of the time that the earth was only a few thousand years old. After years of almost single-handedly studying land across the country, he published the first geological map of an entire country in 1815. From humble origins, he became nationally famous as the father of English geology. For a time, he lived at Rugbourne Farm near High Littleton. The canal's prosperity was halted by the coming of the railways and because some of the coal seams at Poulton and Timsbury were worked out. The southern branch, with its tramway, had been sold to the Somerset and Dorset Joint Railway Company. But the northern branch of the canal finally closed in 1898 and was covered along much of its route by the Camerton to Limpley Stoke railway line. Today you can walk along the canal's route where there is public access and see many of the remains of the canal. At its junction with the Kennet and Avon Canal at Dundas, the first 500 metres of the canal has been restored and is used as moorings at Brassknocker Basin. Since 1992, the Somersetshire Coal Canal Society members have been working to preserve many of the canal structures, aqueducts, bridges, locks, tunnels and the line of the canal. Recently, work has begun at Timsbury and Poulton Basins. When the dry dock was cleared, it was found to be the biggest on any canal network in England. The bridge over the dry dock has been rebuilt. And in 2015, a length of canal was restored to water. This local amenity is now enjoyed by many people. You can join us as a member on our guided walks, talks and work parties. You'll get our newsletter, Wayhouse, about our activities and research. You can read lots more about this fascinating part of our industrial heritage and join the Society via our website.